thank you. Uh, I appreciate the uh, comments that I heard this morning from Senator Klobuchar and appreciate her leadership and efforts to see that the adjustment, uh, Afghan Adjustment Act becomes law. I think I'm followed by my colleague uh, on the Veterans Committee, Senator Blumenthal from Connecticut. This has been a uh, bipartisan effort to make certain that legislation was drafted, introduced, and that lives were protected and changed. From my perspective, one of the saddest days or few days of my time as a United States Senator was when the United States withdrew from Afghanistan, not necessarily the withdrawal, but the manner in which it occurred and the number of people, some Americans, many of, many of them Afghans, Afghans who helped Americans during our time in Afghanistan were left behind and the manner in which those who were able to escape what they had to endure in many instances to do so. We approach the second anniversary of this disastrous withdrawal from Afghanistan. Many of those Afghans who escaped to the U.S. now face, continue to face uncertainty in their lives, uncertainty as their original parole status is set to expire soon. Most of that uh, status for their uh, legal presence in the United States expires two years from their arrival in the United States, and in many instances, that's now the month of August 2023. I join my colleagues, uh, my colleague Senator Klobuchar, in introducing the Afghan Adjustment Act to make certain that Afghans who sought refuge in the United States are able to apply for a permanent legal residency after, ungo after undergoing additional vetting. This amendment, this legislation is now amendment pending on the National Defense Authorization Act. Uh, I hope we are able to have a vote on this amendment, that it's included, the vote is, occurs, and I hope that that vote is successful. This amendment establishes a pathway for our Afghan partners to begin a more certain and perhaps new life. The rushed and chaotic withdrawal created a potential loophole for bad actors to be admitted to the United States. So if you're interested in our national security, which I know we all are, this amendment establishes a critical vetting process to reduce the threats to that national security. Failing to pass this amendment, failing for this bill to become law, means that none of the refugees will undergo the necessary additional vetting. Undergoing that vetting then can create the opportunity for certainty in the lives of those Afghan refugees who are here. For two decades, countless Afghans stood by our service members and risked their lives and their families' lives to support our troops, our troops in Afghanistan. This uh, withdrawal and the current circumstance resulted in more than a thousand contacts with my office asking for help in getting someone out of Afghanistan, someone who served side by side with a soldier from Fort Riley. Uh, our hometown pastor's daughter and husband, missionaries, Christian missionaries in Afghanistan, looking for help to get out of Afghanistan, those people who are Christians in that country. The vast majority of people who are in this uncertain stage were people who either through our, our domestic uh, operations, our opportunity to, to try to stabilize Afghanistan or our military, they are the ones who are now living a life of uncertainty and potential return or removal from the United States. Under the present regulations, our Afghan allies admitted under temporary humanitarian status can only attain permanent legal status through an overburdened, unworking, dysfunctional asylum system or the long-winded special immigrant visa process. As a result, thousands face this troubling uncertainty as they, strive, excuse me, as they strive to create a new life here. Recently in uh, the town we live in, Manhattan, Kansas, uh, a block party was uh, created to host Afghan residents of our community. Uh, it was pleasing to see the Afghan culture celebrated, and it was pleasing to see the community uh, support their new neighbors. 
it is always a good thing to see when people come together. The practical help offered our Afghans is priceless, but all that community support and assistance will do little good if we don't pass the opportunities that the Afghan Adjustment Act provides these individuals. The amendment before us today will help provide certainty to many Afghan partners, work to help other Afghan partners who are stranded in other countries. So we have the challenge of Afghans in the United States who have soon will have no legal status and we have those that are still trying to get out of Afghanistan. And finally, we have those who have escaped Afghanistan to another country, but can't yet migrate any further. Those people are stranded. They need our assistance. We also need to make sure that our vetting requirements protect our national security. This legislation does both, protects our national security and increases our opportunity to treat individuals, human beings, in a humanitarian way. I thank Senator Klobuchar for her invitation to join us in this, to, for me to join her here today in this bipartisan effort. And Senator Klobuchar mentioned um, a number of veterans organizations and veterans who endorsed this legislation and thus this amendment. This issue was brought to me most directly by the Iraqi and Afghan veterans of America who support this legislation and who brought information and encouragement to me to help uh, see that this legislation is passed. But it's also supported by Blue Star families, by the American Legion, the VFW, and many other veterans and veteran organizations. Those who served our country, those Americans who served our country, they care about those who helped save their lives in Afghanistan, and they would like to see the United States Senate take the steps that we're asking be taken today. Mr. President, I yield the floor. I recognize I, I yield the floor.